Welcome back to Bad Attitude C10. Today we'll be doing the 160 amp alternator upgrade that I picked up off of eBay. Uh, we bumped up to the 160 amp due to all the pumps and fans that will be added to the Bad Attitude C10. So the 100 amp I figured just wouldn't be enough so that's why we did the upgrade. Now this alternator has three mounting holes in it and it takes the uh, early Camaro or truck style bracketry. So I actually picked this one up for an early model Camaro. I think it's like a 98 through an 02 or something. And uh, the bracket is from Dirty Dingo. Now this bracket's really cool because it's going to allow us to actually mount it uh, to the lower portion of our block and this is a billet back brace that will go to the block. Now this brace and the front brace come in a kit and it includes the pulley uh, or idler pulley, all, all the hardware for it and it comes with spacers that would be required depending on your spacing needed. Uh, some will need all spacers, some won't. The long spacer here would actually go to a third boat that mounts to the aluminum block. In our case, we're using a truck block, so we'll only be using two of these three bolts. Uh, one of the bolts we will actually have to drill the hole in the pad of the front of the block for, and uh, that's just part of it. So all the hardware, including the bracket for the rear, uh, comes in this kit, and it's complete. Now the small spacer I just showed you will actually allow us to put it between the back brace and our alternator to achieve our truck spacing. When it comes to the front bracket, the lower hole will be used. The center hole is actually for an aluminum block, so we won't be using it. The top hole is the hole we're actually gonna have to mock up and drill in our block to install the bracket. Now you will need a tap and all the instructions will tell you what is needed. I just picked this one up off of uh, Amazon. I think it was like four or five bucks and a .339 or the letter R drill bit. So other than that, let's get going. All right guys, so those of you who have watched before know I kind of do things my own way and what makes sense to me is what I do. So these two hole locations are what we'll be using when we mount our bracket. Now, the block will interfere and you won't be able to line this up properly. So Dirty Dingo's instructions will tell you to mount the plate upside down and use that as a guide as far as where to uh, drill your hoe. Uh, as far as I go, you know, I mean, I would like to know if the back brace is gonna be in the right location and everything as well, but we're gonna see how this mocks up real quick. So as usual, right off the bat, Houston, we have a problem. You suck. So on the rear of this alternator, there is a plastic cover. And as you can see here, uh, sorry about the bouncing photos, the plastic cover, there's a vent. And that vent is hitting the ear that's coming off the back of the block and it's not allowing the alternator to go up as far as it needs. So in this area right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the vent tube and uh, go from there. So after fighting to get the cover off, I then got a cutoff wheel and made my cut. I used a sanding disc to get rid of any burrs and sharp edges off the cover before reinstalling it. Now guys, since we already know that the Dirty Dingo bracket fits the pattern of our alternator, instead of me having to have one more hand to hold stuff together, I just used the bolt straight through the alternator itself, and the alternator and spacer would be used to simulate everything and would line up my secondary hole to drill. And doing it in this method, it would allow me to put the lower bolt in, and then I would also line up to make sure that the back brace fits properly, and then put the top spacer in and mark where the hole would need to be drilled. So as I mentioned earlier, to get our pulley alignment proper, we did have to run the spacer between the back of our alternator and the back brace supplied in the kit. 
Now, once that was all snugged up, I put the spacer where the top boat would be and then inserted the boat in it and made sure it moved freely. And then I snugged everything up. I again checked to make sure the top boat moved freely and then I removed it. Now guys, I wanted to use something bright to mark the color, so I have some bright green torque seal. So I administered it to the end of the boat that would go in. I then inserted the boat back through the alternator and the spacer and pushed it up to the block and spun it a few times. Now, just to be safe that it left an impression, I lightly tapped the head of the boat with a hammer and then removed it. And then I removed the hardware to take the alternator back off the block. As you see, this left us a bright green mark, so we knew exactly where we would need to drill our hole. So I covered the alternator to protect it from shavings, and then I used a center punch and a hammer to mark the center of our hole. I used a smaller drill bit as a pilot hole first. Now guys, in the instructions, Dirty Dingo suggested to drill the main hole one inch and then tap three quarters of an inch in. I do not have any drill stops, so I used some painter's tape and a tape measure to mark my drill bit so I had a guide as to how far in I needed to drill. So pretty simple, just wrap the bit and then measured it, and as you can see here, we're at one inch. With our pilot hole now drilled, I put the letter R bit in the drill and went on ahead and drilled our hole to the size needed for the tap. With our hole now being where it needed to be, I used brake cleaner to clean out the uh, hole itself. I did apply oil on her tap. Guys, I highly recommend you use oil when you're tapping a hole and go a little bit at a time and go back and forth, back and forth, and every so often, remove your tap and get any shavings off of it, clean it, and reapply oil and move forward. Now I know it seems excessive and time consuming to keep removing the tap and cleaning it and re and cleaning and re but I break way less taps than I used to doing this method. Just as I did the drill bits, I went on ahead and put tape around the tap marking the three quarter inch mark. Cleaned the hoe, applied more oil, and finished it up. I used a magnet to clean any extra shavings out, and I did run the tap through a few more times with oil to make sure that everything was lubed up and good to go. With that now complete, it was time to install our bracket and alternator. Now, this is just the mock-up, so when I installed the idler pulley, I did put the washer and the jam nut on the back, but I'm just gonna leave them loose because uh, again, it's just mock-up. But here's the finished product.